All right, this video is going to talk about how a change in input prices is going to affect cost minimization by a firm. So what I've drawn up here is I've drawn in our a, a ISO quant on our um, diagram. And so I have the ISO quant up here. It's arbitrarily set at a 50. And then I have two different I, um, ISO cost lines drawn in there. One's steeper than the other. The the slope of the ISO cost is, well, there's a negative sign here, but the slope of the ISO cost is the ratio of the input prices. So when the, uh, when the prices of one of the inputs change, then that's going to change the slope of the ISO cost. Remember, we don't care about uh, which ISO cost a firm is on. They can be with, on whichever one they need to, to uh, uh, produce the amount of output that we've decided that they're going to produce. So this isn't like this isn't like the uh, consumer when we had a change in the price in their budget line would pivot. Uh, what we're doing is we're going to anchor the firm. We're going to say the firm's going to produce on this ISO quant. And then we just with uh, ISO cost with uh, changing slopes. So uh, I've got this drawn with two different ISO costs showing two different um, uh, input price ratios. So all we have to do is figure out which one's which. Well, if the wage goes up, the ISO cost is going to get steeper because the slope is wage over the price of capital. So with uh, the wage in the numerator, an increase in the wage will make the ISO cost steeper. A decrease in the price of capital will also make the ISO cost steeper. So I've labeled these I IC1 and IC2 just the, when I drew them up there. So that would mean if we were thinking about an increase in the wage of labor, what would be happening is the uh, ISO cost would shift from being IC2 to something like IC1. And that's just uh, it, it's, it's the change in the direction that we have that's important. So IC2 to IC1 would be either an increase in the wage or a decrease in the uh, um, price of capital. So that's making the ISO cost steeper. IC1 to IC2 would be something, uh, would be the shift when the uh, ISO cost becomes flatter. What's going to make the ISO cost flatter? Well, again, with wage in the numerator, if the wage goes down, that uh, ratio gets smaller. Or if the price of capital goes up, the the uh, the denominator gets bigger, and that'll make this uh, the ratio smaller. So a decrease in the wage or an increase in the price of capital would cause a shift from IC1 to IC2. Once we've got that, the response of the a firm in terms of using inputs to min, uh, to minimize cost is just sort of what you would expect in terms of substitution. So suppose you look at IC2 to IC1. That's, the, for instance, an increase in the wage. If the, if the wage goes up, now all of a sudden capital becomes a cheaper way for the firm to try to produce output. So we would sort of expect that they would want to use more capital and, and less uh, labor because labor is more expensive. So uh, IC2 to IC1, the uh, quantities of capital and labor involved are, are here and here respectively. So L2 to L1, you would use less labor. K2 to K1, you use more capital. So the wage of labor goes up, you substitute capital for labor. Using less labor, you can conserve on the use of labor because that's now more expensive and try to use uh, capital more in, in production. If the wage of labor goes down, you have the shift from IC1 to IC2. Then you can see now we're shifting from K1 and L1 to K2 and L2. We're going to use uh, less capital and more labor. And if the wage of labor goes down, labor is now relatively cheaper. Labor is cheaper, so you'd want to use more labor. Or if the wage, uh, the price of capital goes up, then that's more expensive. You want to conserve on using capital. So you'd uh, use less capital and more labor. So either either way, uh, you know, we can trace this out with the, whether it's going to be an increase in the uh, wage of labor or a decrease in the price of capital or a uh, decrease in the price of labor or increase in the price of capital. This is how you'd end up. This is how you'd end up drawing the diagram.
and, and then you just have to label it accordingly. Now, one thing I'll just mention here is we're going to come back in uh, chapter 13 to revisit this diagram, to revisit this change in the uh, um, input prices. And there's going to be an extra effect that we're going to add in in that case. So we'll, we'll, we will revisit this. This isn't, um, this isn't the, the whole story. Uh, or as the, the, the great, uh, when we get to chapter 13, or as, as the great radio commentator uh, Paul Harvey said, well, we'll get the rest of the story then. You know, we'll get the rest of the story of what's going on here in, in chapter 13. But for right now, this is our story, and, and we'll stick with it for, for uh, chapter 7.